So, you're ready to set up and use Smart Deploy. Great. While most people install and use Smart Deploy without a problem, certain environments are known to cause snags. But no worries. They're easier to fix than you might expect, and this video will give you the information that you need so that you're successful in setting up and using Smart Deploy. Before we begin, you should always check to see if you're on the latest version of Smart Deploy and have the latest versions of the platform packs you're using. So if you see this update available alert in the corner or this symbol next to a platform pack in your library, don't ignore it. If you're not sure which version you're using, just go to tools and look in the lower right corner. While we're at it, remember that when you update to a new version of Smart Deploy, you also need to recreate any boot media that you are using. First, let's talk about roadblocks that can occur when trying to capture your Windows image. There are a lot of things inside and outside of your reference VM that can break the capture process. Typically, it's something that's blocking the mounting of the virtual disk or the scanning of one or more files on the virtual disk. Let's cover some of the most common ones. First up, snapshots. If you're trying to capture your image direct from virtual disk, it's not going to work if you have snapshots of the VM in place. If you need to keep these snapshots, then you'll want to perform a warm capture. I'll touch on that in just a second. Next is antivirus. Antivirus and other security software can break the image capture process in unpredictable ways or sometimes not interfere at all. This goes for any that's installed on the reference VM or running on the Smart Deploy console host. Our recommendation is to leave it off of the reference virtual machine and use the tasks in your answer file to script the installation during deployment and if possible, temporarily disable it on the Smart Deploy console host. The last scenario that can cause problems during image capture has to do with pending updates. You might find that if you boot your reference VM, there's some pending update configurations that need to complete, or there are some updates available. This can sometimes cause problems with capturing your image. Boot your VM, check for updates, and give it a restart, then shut down using the command line and try again. If you get stuck trying to create media, there are a few common culprits. Creating media is similar to capturing an image in that a boot image is mounted and copied to the media that you're creating. This means that the antivirus rule applies here. If you can, disable it and try again. Next, make sure you're using Smart Deploy on a physical host if you're creating USB media. Some virtualization platforms can allow a virtual machine to access a USB drive, but we find that it doesn't always work the way that we want it to. Lastly, one error we see a lot is a message that the image won't fit on the USB drive despite the available space. This happens if you're attempting to use a FAT32 format drive and there's a single file over 4GB saved somewhere on the reference VM. Smart Deploy can split your image to fit on your USB drive within the 4GB size limit of FAT32, however it cannot split individual files within that image. An application called WinDareStat can help you find any large files that are hiding your reference VM so that you can remove them and recapture your image. Now, let's talk about errors during deployment. Errors during deployment can be tricky to narrow down and often require reviewing logs, but it helps to know which part of the deployment is breaking. You can go back to the Smart Deploy boot menu and click Collect Logs to create a zip file with logs that you can use to investigate. Deploy.log will tell you about your deployment, and the other logs in the Windows folder will tell you about sysprep and other things. This is usually our first request from you when you contact support. One of the most common deployment options is to have Smart Deploy connect to a file server and stream your image and platform pack to your target PC. Most of the time this works great and it all happens seamlessly, but if we can't connect to the network or access the file share where your image is saved, you might see a please specify an image prompt during deployment. If this happens, first check to make sure that you have a valid IP listed in the bottom right corner of the Smart Deploy boot environment screen. Then go back and double check your credentials and image path in the answer files. We use these to map a drive during deployment. Another common error references Microsoft Windows Shell setup. This is almost always a problem with the Windows product key that was specified at capture or in the answer file. Try recapturing your image without specifying the key in the capture wizard and then create a new answer file. It will know that there's no key in your image and then it will ask you to specify it. It's easier to change out your product key this way if you find out that you've got the wrong key or that you've made a typo. I'm bringing up antivirus again. You may have passed the capture part with antivirus installed on the reference VM, but it's still a possibility that it breaks deployment. 
If it's a part of your image and you can't pass deployment, uninstall it and recapture. You can use the tasks in your answer file to script the installation post deployment. Lastly, avoid in-place Windows upgrades. If you've updated your Windows 10 installation on your reference VM following a major version spring fall update, you may find that sysprep is broken. Our official recommendation is to create a new virtual machine when you want to deploy the latest major version of Windows 10. You'll save yourself a lot of potential headaches because Microsoft can leave a bunch of old data behind during an update. It often breaks sysprep and can potentially fail altogether. If you want to try it, make a backup of your VM or use a snapshot and a warm capture so that you can easily roll back if you need to. Now, let's talk about deploying images and applications from your admin console. So, what if the deployment appears to start but nothing happens? If you're attempting to start a network deployment but nothing ever seems to happen, take a look at the resource monitor on your smart deploy host to see what your outgoing network traffic looks like. If it's absolutely dead, then you may have to open the ports required by Smart Deploy. What if the client is listed in the console, but it's gray? If your endpoint is grayed out in the console, then that means that they were talking at one point, but haven't been able to communicate since. Check your ports and that the client is powered on. The last thing that I want to touch on is the scenario where Smart Deploy isn't receiving an IP when deployment starts. Some platform packs have drivers for WinPE. If you find that you're not able to reach the network while in SmartPE, make sure that you've downloaded the platform pack for that device and recreated your media selecting that pack in the process to ensure that any pre-installation environment drivers are included. So there are the quick fixes to common first use roadblocks with Smart Deploy. If you are still having problems or I didn't cover your issue, you can search our knowledge base at support.smartdeploy.com or have your account manager connect you with a tech who can help you, like me. I hope this video was helpful. Good luck with your deployment projects. As always, thank you for watching and I will see you next time.